Good evening, test subjects. Welcome to the theoretical guide video for Shuichi. So, with the turn turn being released, Shuichi received a small rework to his kit, changing the flow of his combos and how he feels to play. Shuichi coming into 1.0 of a turn turn, his E no longer has a post animation delay, as well as targets hit with this ability will be marked and take 20% and more damage. Enemies mark will be priority for all your passive daggers, so instead of them choosing the random target, it will go to the nearest target that is marked. Along with the E change, they changed this passive to no longer increase his basic attack damage at max stacks, but instead will now drop a dagger behind the target on his first auto at max stacks, as well as doing max health damage. So now that you know what's changed about Shuichi, we'll talk about how he plays in game. Shuichi is a mage assassin using his high ability and high damage to kill any target, with not without any flaws though. Him having low defense and low HP, as well as low utility, he's a very high risk, high reward character. In large team fights, you almost never want to be the one starting it. Your job is to look for their carry and kill them before they can do any harm to your team. Sometimes you will have to engage whether you got caught out or the rest of your team doesn't have a good way to engage. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, let's move on to his skills. Starting with his first ability, Good Faith, Bad Faith. This is your main poke ability that also serves as your setup, with Bad Faith, which can be activated with the second activation, after you first hit a target with Good Faith. It will create a cone in a short distance in front of you, allowing you to drop a dagger, allowing you to also dash into your enemies with your second ability. Bottom line. This is your bread and butter to your kit, the, and is the most important ability as it's where Shoichi's main source of damage as well as your means of escape lies. Using this ability comes with great risks as it can easily put you out of position and cause you to die. Risky business, this is your main setup ability and your only skill shot in your kit, so make sure you hit your target. As well as when it hits its target, it'll do three things. One, increase the amount of damage the target takes. 2. Slow the target that scales with level, and 3. Drops a dagger behind the target on impact. Be sure to use this well. Ruthless. On activation, you will throw out 4 daggers in a square, <laughs> square formation, dealing damage to those close to you, and allowing for bottom line to deal its max amount of damage, and allowing you to all in a target. Be careful though, as this ability will also close in what I mean by this is if you're standing next to a wall, the dagger nearest to you will drop on top of you instead of over the wall. Keep this in mind. And lastly, his passive, Phony Deal. This is what allows Shuichi to be able to loop his damage. For every time you collect your dagger, you gain two stacks of Phony Deal, maxing out at four stacks. Once you get max stacks, your auto will drop a dagger and do you max percent health damage. Now that you know what his skills are, what they do, let's talk about some tips that will help you learn this character. For one, Shuichi's main source of damage comes from his W passing through targets. Being able to reset your W is key to being able to kill any target, but also allows you for a way out, so getting your reset is very important. Tip number two. Be aware of your surroundings. What I mean by this is that Shuichi is an all-in character, so picking and choosing your fights are very important, as if you get third-partied or get caught out, you will most likely be dying, unable to escape or fight back. Tip number three, Dagger Skill. Dagger Skill is your friend, do not ignore this. After finishing your build, you want to try and farm up until unlocking level one of your weapon skill. This will solve one of Shuichi's flaws, that not being able to escape freely or disengage. Dagger skill allowing you to go invis is very strong for Shuichi as his escape is almost non-existent. But this skill can also be used as an offensive tool, allowing you to sneak up onto a target or allowing you to get your W reset. But keep in mind, if you use it that way, you will end up TPing behind the target wherever you're facing. So keep that in mind as you incorporate this into your combos. Next are builds. Honestly, there isn't much to say this builds changed a lot, and this portion of the guide will only last so long, but for this patch 1.0, there will be two builds that I use that are being an alternate route that runs amp drone for more damage, and 
and another one that's great for dueling that runs vampiric. Next is transitions. Here's a list of items that you want by late game. These are items that are number one priority after finishing a build, and once you get enough credits for it or the resources for it, you want to go for them. Starting with your weapon, Eclipse. Eclipse is going to be your only weapon transition in this category, as it's only good upgrade with a high AP slash amp stat, giving you a major boost in damage, and this should be number one priority to upgrade first. For your chest piece, you have a few options. Cabana, Holy Orders, and Queen of Hearts. Starting with Cabana, Cabana is the easiest upgrade, as all you would need is a Commander's plus Meteor. So this is something you can go for if you have the resource for it. 2. Holy Orders. Holy Orders requires a Force Core, but in return gives you a huge spike in your amp, as well as giving you a decent amount of cooldown. Now, Queen of Hearts, in my opinion, is one of the better options. Yes, you lose amp, considering that Holy Orders has two uh, stats that gives you increased amp. But, instead, it gives you cooldown and cooldown reductions, giving you more damage in the form of more ability spam, as well as giving you a little bit more of a tankier stat. For your arm piece, Scotty, Tinlos Band, and Dragon Scale. Scotty is okay in terms of upgrades, but there are more better upgrades to fill the slot. Tindal's Monarch is an easy upgrade, only needing a Mithril, as well as it giving you a decent amount of damage and cooldown. Dragon Scale, in my opinion, is the best upgrade for the slot, giving you a good amount of AP and Armored Pen, which is very helpful for killing tagger targets, as well as doing even more damage to squishier targets. Head Transitions you got Sultan's, Opera's Mask, and Persona. Once again, Sultan is an easy upgrade for an early game. It doesn't take too much to make, they're only requiring a trait. Now, the reason why I hate Opera Mask, I wouldn't say hate, but rate it lower than Persona, is because it's more of a side grade, and is more situational more than anything. Yes, it has Omni Siphon, which is good, but that's really, that's really all it gives you. And in my opinion, is more for defensive option. Persona, on the other hand, is the complete opposite of it. Probably the best headpiece for Shuichi, as the stats it gives you is enough to kill any target. And combine this with Eclipse, you have an insane amount of amp. Plus, it trumps over Opera in terms of value, with Persona stats being doubled of Opera's. But do keep in mind, if you do go this item, you cannot go Holy Orders as your chess piece, as they both have a unique amp scaling stat keep that in mind next is your leg transitions legs of steel and red shoes honestly legs of steel are really meant for your early game and can be decent into late game but if you manage to get blood get red shoes it is a must have just for the fact that it does what leg of steel does but 100 times better giving you a good amount of amp and heal reduction in your skills and autos as well as giving you Omni Siphon and Attack Speed, which Shoichi does appreciate. Now, with that out of the way, let's move on to combos. Starting with your basic opener, your EWQ. This will 9 out of 10 times be your first opener to start any fight, as it first leaves a dagger, allowing you to get your reset on your W if you decide to all in, while also being a safe way to bait your enemy team. The reason why I say this is because a lot of players know how Shuichi works. And the moment they see that dagger drop, they'll flock to it like a pack of piranhas, wait for their prey, and with this, it will create one of two things. One, create an opening for your team to collapse, or two, bait out an escape ability from the enemy carry. The reason why I say this is because they will fear you. Keep this in mind. And following up with the E opener is the full combo of what you should do when you land it. <laughs> Similar to the last opener, you will be using your Q2 instead of your E. <laughs> With prepping good faith, you can get to bad faith. 
This opener will allow you to an easier option to gauge onto the target as it doesn't require to land your E to drop a dagger. A great thing about this combo is that it allows you to chain longer since you saved your E. Once you engage, you can E the target for the slow and damage, allowing your W to be up again, allowing for more follow up damage. Here's the full version of the Q2 opener. <laughs> And there are many cool variations of these combos, allowing, especially now, with Shuichi basically having an infinite loop of daggers, giving him, in theory, infinite Ws. For example, with the, using the W opener and including your D skill to TP onto the dagger, if you mess up and run out of W resets. <laughs> But of course, this is all just on paper. In-game, it's not going to be that easy to execute these combos, especially with characters having good escape tools or ways of stopping your damage with either hard CC or summer spell like stasis or blink. But no need to worry too much about that as not being able to complete these combos perfectly because isn't that important. Because every situation is going to be different whether that the enemy team has a CC comp completely negating you in any team fight, or it's just them being too tanky for you. But of course, this will always come more in experience. The more you play the game, the more you'll learn. So, as most players would know, metas in games always change, some faster than others. This applies to Eternal Return, and since we are still fresh from release, Things are about to change. So with this guide, I try to stick to things that will last, even though even through meta changes. So things like matchups can easily change depending on what's good or who's bad. So my final advice to you all aspiring Shuichi mains is to play your hearts out, experience what can't be taught, learn firsthand who you can and cannot fight. All I can do is show you the path. It's up to you to which one you take. Now, I'll see you out there. Dr. Lee, signing out.